evening, everyone. I hate to interrupt your fun and opportunity to visit with old friends, but we do need to get the program started. So if I could have your attention for just a moment. I'm Rita Rowell. I'm the Executive Director of the GSW Foundation, and I work closely with the Office of Alumni Affairs and the Alumni Association. It's our pleasure to host this second annual Alumni Awards event for GSW. Tonight, we have the honor of recognizing outstanding accomplishments of an alumna or alumnus from every school or college. We will also honor the Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, as well as the recipient of the Alumni Association Lee Wynn Finkley Award. We thank you all for joining us. I call your attention to the beautiful blown glass centerpieces on your tables and Chuck Wells from the Fine Arts Department. Chuck, where are you? He's in the back of the room. They're beautiful, thank you. And Chuck has offered those for sale this evening, so I think they're about $65. If you, want to see, if you see one you like and you want to see him, the money will go toward the Fine Arts Department. There's some smaller ones for lesser prices, so Chuck can tell you about that. But if you're interested, let him know. If you've seen them in art galleries, you know they sell for a whole lot more than that. We're fortunate to have these examples of their craft. At this time, I'm going to ask Mr. Ricky Arnold, who's president of the GSW Alumni Association, for the invocation. We'll hear more from Ricky later, but Ricky, please come up. Before we have our invocation, uh, two little quick tidbits. First, if you'd care to purchase a raffle ticket, we do have a, a couple left that are going over here. Cheryl Fletcher, if you will, would you stand up? Uh, if you would like one, oh, she is, excuse me. Uh, if you will, uh, if you'd like one, please see uh, Cheryl. That will be at the end, uh, prior to my closing remarks, and uh, if you would like to purchase one. Also, I see a lot of familiar faces, some older, some younger, but I want you to be thinking as we progress through this evening, what possibly got you here or what kept you here. Uh, and we'll just kind of go with that at the end. Mine was the 60s and we had concerts here. In the 70s, there was a little thing called streaking, and it occurred between <laughs> Complex 2 and 3. It also brought the city out with the police who enjoyed it, and they, the crowd just cheered those bodies on. Uh, but anyway, if you would, bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, we come before you now thanking you for this day. We thank you for this university. We thank you for the graduates, for those who have attended, their families, Lord, what it means to this community, what it means to each of us. Father, as we uh, partake of this food and recognize the various awards here, we just thank you. We thank you for our country and the ability to be able to come as a free people and celebrate tonight. We ask you to be with our <laughs> troops around the world, continue to be with our country. May it always serve you the way you'd have it to serve. Use this food now to nourish our bodies and us to your continued service. For we pray it in your son's name. Amen. Enjoy. Enjoy your meal and we'll be back with you soon. Okay, I'm back. If I could have your attention again, please. I know everyone's enjoying their meal. The people up front are probably finished and having dessert, and the people in the back just got their food. So that's just the way it goes when we have a good crowd, and we thank you all again for being a good crowd this evening and for coming out to support Georgia Southwestern. So please continue to eat. We're not stopping that. We just are going to move on with the program. We're fortunate here at Georgia Southwestern to have the leadership of Dr. Neil Weaver as our new president. Christy Weaver, we're glad that you're here and we appreciate all that you do as well. So she played two rounds of golf at the tournament today and is here this evening looking like she hasn't done anything out of the ordinary. So Christy, thank you so much for everything that you do for us. 
And if you haven't already gotten to know Neil and Christy Weaver, I encourage you to do so. But at this time, I bring President Weaver to the podium. Thank you, Rita. I'm really, uh, it's a great honor for me to be here tonight and uh, to enjoy this really, really fun evening. There are some folks that I'd, I'd like to recognize tonight before we get to our honorees. And if you, if you all would uh, not applaud until I get through this whole list, that would, that would be great. If, uh, if you start applauding, then at our next uh, administrative council meeting, we have to have a whole conversation about who's the most popular and who got the most clapping. So <laughs> please don't do that. But we do have university's leadership team here with us tonight. And so if I could, if I could get you guys just to stand up real briefly, uh, Cody King, our Vice President for Business and Finance, uh, Gay Hayes, our Vice President for Enrollment Management, it's Dr. Sam Miller, uh, Vice President for Student Affairs. Oh my gosh, now we started already. Uh, Royce Hackett, uh, in charge of our IT department. Uh, Linda Lee Purvis, our Vice President for Academic Affairs. Uh, Mike Leader, our Athletic Director. Uh, Lisa Esom, in charge, Executive Director of our uh, Rosalind Carter Institute, and uh, you met Rita uh, in charge of our foundation. That's our leadership team. We also have uh, the deans of our colleges and schools here tonight. Uh, Rachel Abbott with the School of Education, back there in the back. Uh, Sandra McDaniel with School of Nursing. Uh, Kelly McCoy, uh, College of Arts and Letters. Uh, I didn't see Boris. Is Boris here tonight? Boris? Uh, Peltzberger? He's ill. He's ill tonight. Uh, Liz Wilson, Dean of the School of Business. And, uh, and then there's two folks that uh, I get to work with every day that I also want to recognize. Uh, Angela Smith, uh, who, who has been a huge help to me. And Stephen Snyder, Director of our Communications and Marketing uh, Office. Uh, these folks are uh, vitally important to the institution. They have worked very hard to get us where we are today and, and I, I'm thrilled they're here with us tonight and I want to, uh, if you all would help me, thank them for their work at the university. Uh, Rita told you that uh, Christy played, uh, th well, she, she actually played 27 holes of golf today. She bailed on us after the third nine. Uh, we played, I, I managed to play 36 and it reminded me uh, of a story I wanted to share with you guys tonight. There was this, I don't know if you have heard this story, but there's this guy and he was uh, stranded, he got, got shipwrecked out on an island and he'd been out there for a couple of years and one day this young beautiful woman kind of emerged out of the ocean and she's wearing this uh, a wetsuit She'd been snorkeling or something, and she came up onto the beach and, and walked right up to the guy, and she said, when was the last time you smoked a cigarette? And he said, oh gosh, it's been a couple years. So she unzipped the pocket on her sleeve, and she pulled out a pack of cigarettes, and he took it, he's like, oh my gosh, that's great. She said, when was the last time you had a drink of whiskey? He said, oh, I, it's, been, it's been even longer than that. So she unzipped the sleeve and she pulled out a, a little flask and he had a drink of whiskey and it was, oh, this is great. And she said, when was the last time you played around? And she started to unzip the front. He said, now don't you tell me you got a set of golf clubs in there. <laughs> so. So that's what we feel like today. Uh, we, we, uh, we're always trying to play around around here. You know, I, I've been here about three months and I am so excited to be the president of Georgia Southwestern. And it's a real honor for me uh, to represent all of you and to represent your university. Let me tell you a little bit about what's going on around here. If you haven't heard, we have the highest enrollment in the history of the institution this year. <laughs> 
That's the eighth consecutive semester of enrollment growth at Georgia Southwestern. We are over 3,000 students. And if you believe the Board of Regents, which I tend to do because they pay me and they're my boss, we are anticipated to grow by more than any other institution in the state of Georgia over the next 10 years. The Rosalind Carter Caregiving Institute is celebrating 30 years of service not only to Georgia Southwestern and to this community, but to the entire country. And next week, we will be celebrating their 30th anniversary, and, and it's going to be a really spectacular event. And uh, we want to congratulate them and celebrate with them and understand that they are a tremendous benefit to this university. I found this out the other day, and, and it, it still blows my mind. We have a, a family nurse practitioners program here at the university, and 100% of the students who have graduated from that program have passed their certification exam the first time they've taken it. And the nurses have passed their certification exam 91% of the time, the, the most recent graduating class, 91%. And, and, and as, a, as, a, as a great sign of tremendous university leadership, the first week that I was here, some of you may remember Dr. Isaacs, a history professor here at the university. He, he uh, left a $650,000 gift to the university to help fund uh, his legacy here at the university. So I'm, I'm about done. I've got enrollment at the highest level ever. We received our large, second largest gift ever. So <coughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I'm looking for, <laughs> I'm looking for something, no, I'm kidding. Um, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do in the next three months, but we're working on that. I do want to, uh, to say congratulations to all of our honorees tonight. Uh, Jeff Benton, Calvin Rhodes, Alan Fort, space as I found out. Uh, Greg Slappy, I didn't say that right apparently. Uh, Judy Tingley and uh, JP Griffin, congratulations to all of you. Uh, and I, I just gotta say, I, we, played, I, we played golf this morning, right? And I got to play with uh, an All-American. Uh, JP was fantastic today. He played so well that when the tournament was over, they added strokes to our score because we were, uh, has, has anybody ever heard of adding strokes to somebody's score because they were too good? Um, that, was, that was unfortunate, but uh, anyway. <laughs> Next year we're gonna use a totally different scoring system so that the president has a better chance to win. Um, but anyway, uh, JP was great, we had a lot of fun today. Alan played with us and uh, we really enjoyed that. Let me, just for a moment, make sure you understand. I, I have worked, my jobs at, in universities have, has been mostly in university advancement. And so the Alumni Association and working with alumni and donors has been a significant part of my job as I've progressed towards the presidency. And, and I can tell you without any question that your involvement with the university and your commitment to the university is critical. It's absolutely necessary. Your degree is like a stock certificate. It goes up in value and it goes down in value. And it goes up in value when our graduates do great things. It goes up in value when our students accomplish great things, when they are recognized, when they are, when they are winning, when they are participating, when they are doing incredible research. That adds value to everybody's degree. And the way that we accomplish those things is through your involvement. It's through your investment. And you being here tonight 
is a great first step. And we welcome you back with open arms, and we want you to always believe that this is your institution. But I don't want you to stop with just coming to some events. We want you to find your passion, find your way to connect, and find your way to make a difference. Because every graduate of Georgia Southwestern is counting on you to help them increase the value of their degree. And our honorees tonight bring incredible value to all of our degrees, to all of your degrees, because they bring honor and recognition and as symbols, they are symbols of great quality. And so we are thrilled to recognize them and, and to thank them for what they do, not only for the community, but for their university. And I encourage you all to find, find a way for, for you uh, to be involved with us. And we welcome you to do that. I met a lot of Pi Kappas tonight, right? We are, we are really glad to have you guys back with us tonight. And we hope that you uh, are enjoying having uh, space here uh, recognized. But you shouldn't have to, we, we don't want you to have to come back just just when one of yours is, is recognized. We hope that you guys come back and, and know that this is your, your campus. And all of you, it's great to have you back. So thank you for, for spending some time with us tonight. I had a great time getting around and, and meeting everybody. And, and I hope we can uh, see you again on campus. You're always welcome to be here. So good night. Thank you, Dr. Weaver. It's an honor for me to present to you our keynote speaker, Dr. Patricia Stark, who is the recipient of the School of Nursing's 2016 Outstanding Alumni Award. Dr. Stark couldn't be with us last year, and we thought, well, we've got to have, she was kind enough to send a videotape, and it was wonderful, but we wanted to have her here, so we're so pleased that it would, you were able to make that work as well. As an educator and leader, She's received numerous honors and recognition, and she's mentored newly appointed deans nationwide. Dr. Stark continues to serve on many statewide, national, and international boards, committees, and task forces. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Patricia Stark to the podium. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here this year. So glad I could come. Um, I'm very appreciative of the education I received here because it has served as a foundation for my 58 year career as a nurse and also foundation for three higher degrees that I earned uh, after my degree here. I also want to recognize that this whole community was supportive. I grew up here and not only did I get a good education, but I got good moral and ethical uh, principles instilled that have served me well uh, throughout my life and as well as a career. As I was looking at the history of the nursing program here, there are some amazing things about the history, and I want to share with you tonight three of those amazing things about this program. It begins, the story begins when the nation was uh, involved in the Second World War, and there was a very severe nursing shortage, both uh, in the civilian and in the military. It was so severe that President Roosevelt proposed doing something that no president has done before or since. He proposed drafting nurses. And this was unprecedented that we were even talking about drafting women. Uh, a bill was prepared uh, for Congress. The House passed the bill, but the, it got bogged down in the Senate. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> At the, um, at the time, most nurses were educated in hospital schools. So the big cities uh, had big hospitals and they trained their own nurses. So students went there, they lived in the dorm, they ate in the hospital, they 
worked, they had their classes there, and when they graduated, many of them stayed on uh, to work there. And in Georgia, uh, the major cities, Atlanta had Grady Hospital School of Nursing, Georgia Baptist, Piedmont, Macon had a school. The other way that you became a nurse was the baccalaureate degree. And if you got a baccalaureate degree, it probably meant you were going into teaching. And Georgia had two uh, that I know of programs, one at Emory and one in the Medical College of Georgia in the Augusta area. So again, the big question was, how do we get more nurses and get them fast? Well, there was a nurse uh, in New York named Mildred Montag, and she uh, started working on her doctoral degree at Columbia University, a teacher's college. And she came up with the idea, why don't we have junior colleges, community colleges, produce nurses? They, they are two-year programs, and we can, they'll get college credit, which they don't get in diploma school. So this um, idea uh, came from New York. So the question to me is, how did this New York idea get down to America's Georgia so fast? <laughs> because Mildred Montag started her first pilot program in 1952, and Georgia Southwestern started its first nursing program in 1953. And she had seven programs uh, in her pilot study. They were all in the Northeast, New Jersey, uh, New York. She had one in California, one in Oregon, and, as far south as she went was Virginia. But the last program in her pilot experiment to see if this would work was in 1955, and Georgia Southwestern graduated its first class in 1956. So this is really an amazing thing, and today we call that uh, early adopters, as the bright idea comes along and you put it in place. Uh, the rest of the story gets a little fuzzier because we don't have good records and so I'm going to have to speculate about what I, what I think happened. Uh, I think that our, the president at that time, who was Dr. Lloyd Mall, must have heard about this idea, this New York project, at some state or national meeting because at one time he was uh, president of the Georgia Joint Council for Paramedical Education. So either, either the president or maybe someone on the Board of Regents or even someone at the hospital had heard about this program. And the wise people in the administration and the community said, let's do it. And they got it going very, very, very fast. So that's an amazing thing to me. Another amazing thing is how the faculty here embraced the idea. Now, in colleges, uh, we make decisions by consensus, right? We are colleagues, we want to discuss it, we want to be sure everybody is in agreement. It's not a top-down kind of organization, and so uh, we have to get all the faculty on board with new ideas. I have started a lot of new programs in my career, and I can tell you that every one of them has been a battle. And the first program I started was at Troy State University in Alabama. It was a master's program, and I had to present the idea before the graduate council, which is made up of the department chairs of history, English, biology, all the other, all the other disciplines. And um, so I presented my proposal, this wonderful idea, be good for the university, be good for the profession, and they turned it down. And I was devastated. I could not understand this. So I went to a mentor of mine, as I was a new dean, and said, you know, what, what happened here? What, what can I do? I've got, I, I want to appeal it. And he said, well, you've got to realize that these people know the university has a set budget. And if you get a new program, you're going to take part of the pie that, that was theirs. So everybody's kind of looking after their own school and their own territory, and they don't really want to, new things kind of stifle the budget. 
So he said, what you need to do is you need to go back to each one of those council members one-on-one, -on -one, sit down with them, tell them what this program, how it's going to be good for them, what's in it for them. So like the math department, say our student, nursing students are going to take statistics, going to add to your revenue, your tuition. And before you leave their office, ask them, can I count on you for your support? And try to get, you know, the votes kind of lined up beforehand. This is the way you do it. So I did my homework. I went to each one individually, tried to win them over, and some uh, some would say, hmm, you know, I'll think about it and kind of noncommittal, but I felt like going in for the appeal that I had enough votes this time. So I presented it again, went up, and they voted again, and they turned it down again. So fortunately, the president said, well, you know what, they're just advisory to me anyway. <laughs> so I'm not going to take their advice. So Dr. Weaver, uh, Maybe you won't have to use that strategy here. <laughs> but we did start the program and it's going strong, you know, 30 years later. But you know what? That did not happen at Georgia Southwestern. The faculty here embraced the program. I was a student here and later I was on the faculty here. And I never had any hint of any of their faculty feeling jealous or competitive. So that to me is an amazing thing about this, this program. Um, the third thing that is amazing to me is the, the cooperation this program had from the local community, the hospital, and particularly the doctors and nurses who helped to teach us. And again, in my career, I have negotiated with a lot of hospitals, and they do not turn loose of their money very easily. Uh, the, the board of trustees of hospitals, they have a duty to the community. Uh, to take care of patients and they want the dollars to go to patient care and if you have students in a hospital or clinic they are going to slow down productivity they're going to ask questions they don't know where anything is they don't know how to chart they know always needing help you have to show them things and we just finished a project in Houston that the uh, it was a federally funded project for nurse practitioners and other advanced practice nurses uh, to increase the number, and, we, and the report has been sent to Congress and it's going to be released very shortly. You'll be reading about it, that uh, we can produce a nurse practitioner for uh, 30000 a year, whereas it's 150000 a year for a medical resident. So the nurse practitioner is going to help with primary care. But the point is that in our project, we determined that it takes five nurses to do the work of four when you have students in the setting because they slow down productivity. So hospitals who have the mandate, you know, no margin, no mission, they're very careful with the, with the money. Uh, but our hospitals in our area here in Americas uh, welcomed this program and helped to sponsor it and not only uh, welcomed students there, they paid us, and I made 50 cents an hour when I was a junior, and 75 cents an hour when I was a senior. So it helped to offset tuition. Uh, likewise, uh, physicians make money when they see patients, whether it's in the hospital or whether it's in the clinic. So if they're not doing those things, they're not uh, generating revenue. But all the physicians in our community gave up their time and taught us in class. They came to the classrooms and uh, taught us many, many hours, all, all, almost all the pathophysiology and the de disease content we learned from physicians. And the nurses, of course, in the uh, hospital as well, were very helpful in teaching us. So it's a greatly supported program from that aspect as well. So let me wind up here because I know we want to uh, get on to the awardees for this year and just say that this is an amazing program and you are continuing to do amazing things. Uh, nurse, the, we say that caring is the essence of nursing. And you have here on this campus the Rosalind Carter Institute of Human Caring. That is really a national and international honor that you have on this 
uh, campus and also the wonderful new nursing building. Congratulations on that. So thank you again and I appreciate the education and all of the people that were involved in it and may you continue to do amazing things here. Thank you. Dr. Stark. Now how the rest of the, the, the award portion of the program is going to work, we work closely with the deans of each college and school on campus and also with our alumni association and alumni friends to identify the outstanding awardees that we're presenting or that we're honoring this evening. Several of you have said, well, I've got some ideas for some other people. So let us know those ideas, and we want to work closely with you for that as well. So we're going to have each of the deans that you see represented there to come up and present the award. And then the honoree, if you will come up and accept it. And if you have something that you would like to say, we would like to hear from you as well. So we'll begin with um, Dr. Kelly McCoy presenting the award for Dr. Greg Slappy. I wasn't able to join us this evening, but it is my pleasure to announce the recipient of the College of Arts and Sciences 2017 Outstanding Alumni Award, Dr. Greg Slappy. While he was at GSW, Dr. Slappy was a three-time All-American in collegiate football and a two-time All-American in baseball. He was Georgia Sports Hall of Fame College Athlete of the Year and was later inducted into the GSW Athletics Hall of Fame. He was Mr. Southwestern and a President's Scholar. Already focused on medicine as a career path, he became interested in sports medicine as a result of his collegiate sports career. He was a member of the Sigma Chi fraternity, served as president, and won the International Balfour Award in 1988 as Sigma Chi's outstanding graduate. Dr. Slappy received a Bachelor of Science in Biology from GSW in 1988 and went on to get his MD from the Medical College of Georgia. Dr. Slappy went to work at Carrollton Orthopedic because he wanted a general practice with a sports medicine focus. Since his arrival there, the sports practice has grown to include almost all of the area high schools and the University of West Georgia where he serves as team physician. Dr. Slappy believes in a conservative approach to patient care and that preventative medicine is as important as surgical intervention. He also understands rehabilitation and patient education are important to long-term success after surgery. Having grown up in Americas, he believes in a strong sense of community and is a past member of the GSW Board of Trustees. Medicine runs in the family for those with the last name Slappy. Several of Dr. Slappy's uncles, as well as his brother, are all orthopedic surgeons. Greg is married, married to Carrollton native Angie, and they have four children. We thank Dr. Slappy for his service to GSW and are proud to present him with this Outstanding Alumni Award. Because he's not able to join us, his fraternity brother, Jimmy Peel, will accept the award and read a statement from, Jim, from Dr. Slappy. I wish Greg was here. Uh, it would have been great to see him. In, hadn't seen him in several years, but he has a prepared statement. Bear with me while I read it. <clears throat> it is a great regret that I can't be here to, this evening. George Southwestern has a very special place in my heart, and I was hoping to convey that tonight. My experiences there were a launching pad to what has been a very successful career so far. I attribute much of my success to the people I have encountered over the years. My foundation was set in, Amer in Americas at Southland Academy 
and again at George Southwestern State University. The people I believe is what set GSW apart from other schools. People that actually take an interest in your life outside the classroom. People that care about the student as a person. People that care about the future of the student that is sitting in their classroom. I remember those people fondly to this day. I was looking forward to having an opportunity to thank them personally for the influences they had on my life. As I am from Americas, I know that my past will always be, will always lead me back here. Thank you for this honor and for allowing me to express my gratitude to an institution and the people who make it so special. Sincerely, Greg. Thank you so much. And if I could ask Dr. Liz Wilson from the School of Business to come up, please. Jeff and I have been going back and forth all week um, about uh, how, how I was going to do this and what he was supposed to do, but I, I am pleased to, um, to introduce the recipient of the School of Business Outstanding Alumni Award, Mr. Jeff Benton. Uh, I have known Jeff since I taught him more years ago than either of us want to remember. And I think I've taught almost everybody at that table. Um, <laughs> You know, educators, uh, we, we judge success not by how many products we produce, not what our sales goals are, but how successful our students are. And thanks to students like Jeff, I consider myself very successful. Um, even though I had a small part in his education, Georgia Southwestern can feel successful because of, of the people at that table, including his wife who went to school here and his sister-in-law and his son and his brothers. Uh, this is a Georgia Southwestern family and I wanna tell you a little bit about Jeff and his successes. Uh, Jeff is currently the Vice President of Operations at Eaton Corporation's Residential and Wiring Services Division. And I gotta tell you just briefly, Jeff's first day in his new job, which includes plants in China, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Mexico, and the U.S. There was a hurricane at his plant in Puerto Rico, and the plant in Mexico was hit with a, with a, a yeah, with an earthquake. So that was his first day, and it, it kind of, kind of like you, Neil, it's been kind of smooth sailing. Um, <laughs> You know, after that first day, he figured, you know, I can rest now. Um, so he's really been drinking from the fire hose. But, but let me tell you a little bit about Jeff. Um, he's responsible for implementing world-class uh, operational performance in six locations, as I said, five countries, over 5,000 employees, supporting nearly a billion dollars uh, in revenue. Jeff has an outstanding track record of accomplishment that spans more than 25 years, which gives you a little bit of hint about how long ago uh, I, I taught him. In that time, he has led multi-site operations in China, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Mexico, and the United States. He is known and respected in his industry for his ability to increase profitability, um, create profitable marketing strategies, and build stakeholder alliances. Prior to joining Eaton last month, Jeff was the president of ALP Lighting, where he led that company to the three most profitable years they'd ever had. Jeff started his career at Cooper Lighting, and did you start here, Jeff? You started here in America, and I think you started as a planner. Uh, and he held several positions uh, with Cooper before moving to ALP. In addition to his work success, over the last 25 years, Jeff has served as either president or board member for several nonprofit organizations, including the GSW Business Advisory Council and the GSW Hurricane Club. 
He is the president of Kappa Sigma Fraternity Alumni Association and the assistant district grandmaster. Jeffs received the 25-year volunteer service award for Kappa Sigma Fraternity at the Kappa Sigma Grand Conclave in Las Vegas this past July. I bet that was an interesting time. <laughs> In addition, Jeff has been a guest lecturer on operational, um, excuse me, on organizational leadership here at Georgia Southwestern and also Macon State University. He's a veteran of the U.S. Army, having served three years before beginning to his career here. Jeff's wife, Amy, is also an alumna of GSW uh, and sits on the GSW Alumni Association Board. His son, Bryce, just graduated from GSW his daughter, Brooke, is a junior in the nursing program here. His brother, Mike, is an alumnus, and his sister-in-law, Mandy, who also graduated from GSW School of Business, uh, is uh, an alumni here as well. And as Jeff would say, go Canes. So Jeff, welcome and congratulations. <laughs> Wow, this is an amazing honor, um, and it's great to see everybody here tonight. What a fantastic crowd. It's awesome to be here. Um, I tell you, I, I've been blown away ever since I got the call that I was going to be recognized here tonight. You know, the first thing that runs through your mind is that I don't think I'm worthy of this at all, uh, and I'm sure that I'm not. Um, it's very humbling. Uh, the foundation that I received here at GSW has really been a launching pad, as Greg said, for my success. The education that I received has been fantastic. The professors that I had were amazing. Uh, they really, truly cared about me as I moved through. And, and even after I got out of school, following up, mentoring me and moving me through my career, allowing me to compete and actually win you know, that next job of increasing responsibility. Just a fantastic group of people. And more than the education, it's really about the relationships. I learned so much at Georgia Southwestern about myself, not just in the classroom, but through the leadership opportunities that I had at GSW. The fraternity, I can't say enough about being a Kappa Sigma, incredibly impactful on my life. We talk about this every year at Rush. Um, my best friends are here tonight through the fraternity. The folks that helped me and educate me throughout my career uh, all come from Georgia Southwestern. There's not a thing that's happened in my life since I got out of the Army that I can't credit Georgia Southwestern with. And that's an amazing thing to say. It's been that impactful in my life. As you see this whole table over here, we're all hurricanes. And we're very proud to be hurricanes. And to see this group here tonight is incredibly exciting. Dr. Weaver, I love the enthusiasm. The passion is fantastic. And I tell you what, the future is bright at GSW, and I can't wait to help out. Thank you so much for this honor. I really appreciate it. You have a great night. Congratulations. Our next recipient is Calvin Rhodes. And Dr. Boris Peltzberger, as I mentioned, is ill this evening and couldn't be here. So I'm going to read this on his behalf. And it's a privilege for me to actually present the recipient of the School of Computing and Mathematics 2017 Outstanding Alumni Award to Mr. Calvin Rhodes. Mr. Rhodes is the Governor's Chief Information Officer for the State of Georgia and Executive Director of the Georgia Technology Authority. He came to state government in January 2011, having held various positions with other companies, including Vice President of Operations and Chief Information Officer, Vice President for Information Technology. Governor Nathan Deal named Mr. Rhodes to lead the state's public-private partnership IT transformation and consolidation effort. This initiative has strengthened security, modernized infra infrastructure and networks, improved reliability, and increased transparency in the state's IT enterprise. Building on its successes, Georgia is evolving its service delivery model to enable state agencies to more easily benefit from changes in the IT marketplace. As state CIO, Mr. Rhodes chairs Georgia's statewide cybersecurity board to assess and strengthen the state's security posture. He also has oversight of the construction and programming of the Georgia Cyber Innovation and Training Center in Augusta. 
The center will promote modernization in cybersecurity technology and workforce development for the public sector and private industry through unique education, training, research, and practical applications. An active member of various technology-related boards, he was honored for his leadership by the Technology Association of Georgia in October 2015. In addition, Computer World Magazine named Mr. Rhodes a 2016 Premier 100 Technology Leader, and he was selected by Government Technology as one of the nation's top 25 doers, dreamers, and drivers of 2016 for his accomplishments using technology to improve government operations and help the public sector serve citizens more effectively. Calvin is a member of the Kappa Sigma fraternity and we're honored to recognize you this evening with this outstanding alumni award. What a tremendous uh, honor for Georgia Southwestern. Uh, as Jeff said, I was uh, really uh, surprised, humbled uh, when the call came. Uh, it's, it's truly uh, just a fascinating feeling for your, your school that, that truly does instill the foundations that we build our lives upon. Um, you know, there's so many other elements that make up that from the principles that our families instill in us to the friends that we associate with. Uh, but when I look back, many of those point to Georgia Southwestern from uh, the days that we uh, struggle with losses from uh, parents and all the ones that uh, reach their arms around us and help lift us up. And those difficult times really make impacts on our lives. And I, I look back to the education that I received here. and. You know, I was telling my wife, Melissa, um, I can't believe it's been 27 years since I uh, was at Georgia Southwestern. Truly how quickly time passes by. And the ability to come back and to uh, share moments like this are, are truly uh, uh, enlightening as well as to, it does help uh, one reflect on all the people that actually make uh, our successes possible. Uh, to the faculty here and just the ability to um, you know, think just for a few moments uh, how quickly that time passes us by. And, um, and I, I, as I was thinking about a few things to say, I, I think about, uh, you know, in the field that I work in, in technology, how quickly that has changed. Uh, back in uh, uh, 1990 when I was here, you know, I, I think I had the first computer in a fraternity house, which uh, tended to lead uh, to very late nights from people wanting to come in and, uh, and play games and do uh, some of their work on it. Um, but when we think about how technology has changed since 2007, the first iPhone introduced, and, and when we think about what we were able to work on here in the computer labs, uh, just how much it's changed. One of the, as I'm out uh, speaking to different groups, uh, I, you know, the technology, when we think about the pace of that change and, and how we, it impacts our lives today uh, is fascinating to be in this field because it will never change slower than it's changing today in our lifetime. It's going to continue to change how we interact and to know that George Southwestern helped me put uh, me into a fascinating field and to uh, work for the governor and to work for you uh, has really been fascinating. I've got to do some really exciting things. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. This is truly appreciated. And I can't say can't say thank you enough. Appreciate it. Now, if I could ask Rachel, Dr. Rachel Abbott, the dean of the School of Education, to come forward. You know, imagine that going from the first computer on you know on campus to the head of the Georgia Technology Authority. That's pretty amazing. It's a lot of technology changes. <laughs> Good evening. It is my privilege to present to you the recipient of the School of Education's 2017 Outstanding Alumni Award, Mr. Alan Fort. Mr. Fort has served 42 years in public education as an award-winning teacher, having won Teacher of the Year three times. State Championship Coach, Assistant Principal of the National School of Excellence, 
and an innovative principal in schools around the state. A past superintendent of Quitman County Schools, he's currently serving as superintendent principal of Talaferra County, <laughs> K-12 in Crawfordville, Georgia. As superintendent, he has authored grants for sustained educational and technological programs totaling $9 million. Mr. Fort was formerly employed by the Georgia Department of Education as a school improvement specialist, assigned to facilitate positive change and needs improvement middle and high schools. He was also involved in the creation of a graduation coach program in Georgia with the Georgia Department of Education and the Governor's Office of Student Achievement. In both of these programs, he supervised, trained, and collaborated with superintendents, principals, teachers, and graduation coaches in middle and high schools in Central and South Georgia. He's also served as, as a consultant for the Southern Regional Educational Board. His influence on education in Georgia is vast. He initiated and supervised the creation of one of the first ninth grade academies in Georgia. He was named one of the five top superintendents in Georgia for 2014-15 by the Georgia School Superintendents Association. He was an original, original member of the first Principals Advisory Board created by Superintendent Kathy Cox to advise her on high school issues around the state. He was the first principal recognized by the Georgia Scholastic Press Association as Outstanding Principal in Georgia, 2006. While at GSW, Mr. Fort was a campus host and was chosen for Kaleidoscope and voted Outstanding Greek Man. He was an original member of the GSW chapter of Blue Key National Honor Society. He was the Archon of Gamma Psi chapter of Pi Kappa Phi in 1974-75 and a member of the GSW College Bowl team, which were Southeastern United States champions, having defeated Georgia Tech in the finals to win. few words, I might not have this opportunity ever again. <laughs> I just want to tell the two guys before me, y'all are children. <laughs> I'm an old man. Totally got to find my glasses. I do want to, you know, when I got this, uh, they called me and I said, Space, tell a few stories. And I said, you know, half of you understand, these are my grandkids over here, so you'll have to, you know, you'll have to. They can yell if you remind. <laughs> uh, you'll have to understand that uh, sometimes I might tell a story, half of you get it, the other half doesn't get it. Uh, some of you chuckling, some of you say, what the heck is he talking about? So I could tell about this when I was golf coach at Westover and we drove from Albany to Moultrie and played in the region golf tournament and we got out of the van and I told the boys, I said, by God, boys, y'all don't win today. You're walking your tails back to Albany. Last putt of the match, my guy sinks it, their guy misses it. We're the Regent Champions. First time in history of Westover. We meet, I said, guys, how'd y'all do this? I said, coach, you told us you was gonna have to walk home if we didn't hit. <laughs> yeah, I could tell you about the time we were playing in the state championship football game at Valwood. It's 14 to 13, Tiff Derry is beating us. All y'all, some of you know about Tiff Derry. We're gonna kick a field goal. Pressure's on, a kicker. He starts out, I grab him by the back. He's just a little old ninth grader. I pull him back. I say, Todd, you can't kick this. I send in Jack. Jack don't care. Jack's a senior. I don't know what he would, anyway, he didn't care. He kicked the winning <laughs> field goal. We won 16 to 14. To tell you how good a coach I am, the guy pulled back off the field, played in the NFL for 12 years. Okay. <laughs> That's how good a coach I was. I can tell you about the little kindergartner. They called me to check him out. He was being mean in class. I pulled him out of class. I got down on my knees. I'm talking to him, what's wrong? And he's doing his fists like this. I says, what are you doing your fists like that for? He said, I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> and of course, I asked him this morning at the golf tournament, I said, can I use this word? 
but they said, I don't know, but anyway, I'm going to, there's this fight that's going to happen at Statesboro High School between two girls who are fighting over the same boy. Have you ever known girls do not fight over the valedictorian or the quarterback? They fight over some worthless creature, you know. Okay. And so they're going to fight, and I'm walking up to them, and I hear this girl saying, I'm going to whip your ass. And I get in the middle of them and say, honey, you're not whipping anybody's ass. She looks up at me and says, I'm going to whip your ass. <laughs> But I'm not going to tell all that stuff. Anyway, Dr. Weaver, uh, faculty and staff, guest tonight, distinguished alumni. And in my opinion, every alumni in here is distinguished because we got in and we got out. The hard part is, you know, you know, sometimes getting in college isn't hard. Getting out, that's hard. And there are no words that can express the honor I have tonight to be recognized by my college and university. This is, I'm, I was born in Americas, moved around, but this is my alma mater. I graduated in Valdosta State and the University of Georgia also, but this is where my heart lies, in Americas, Georgia, at Georgia Southwestern, just like we said, forever hurricanes. Uh, Saturday, I'm a dog. <laughs> yeah. Every day, I'm a Georgia Southwestern hurricane. I want to thank Georgia Southwest because when I came to school, I was 17 years old, fresh out of diapers. I was the only child, spoiled rotten. My mama was a teacher. She loved me to death. My daddy didn't know what to do with me. This school came, took me in, educated me, and then spit me out into the world. And I would be remiss at this time if I did not recognize our president at that time, Dr. King, who was just a tremendously fabulous, friendly guy, spoke to you just like I know Dr. Weaver will. I can uh, give my honor to Dr. Jay Clyde. He was my college bowl guy. And uh, yeah. Dr. Clyde told me, yeah, I was on, we whipped Georgia Tech's, we whipped Georgia Tech. And I love that. <laughs> but he told me, he said, he said, Alan, I've never seen a student with so much intelligence and use it so little like you did. <laughs> uh, I do honor, uh, Mr. Blunt, Mr. Blunt was my last advisor. Hell, I had everyone in the school at that time. I'd been here so long. But he took me outside, he looked at my records, he said, Dad, let me look at this. He said, come here, let me show you something. He walked outside and see that building right down there? That's your library. You need to visit every now and then, okay? And I do want to thank my Pi Kappa Phi brothers. You taught me a lot of great things. Oh, you taught me a lot of things that, uh, that I've learned from, you know, if conventional wisdom shows that you learn from your mistakes, I should be the most intelligent guy in the world right now. And I thank you so much for your friendship. As I said, I was the only child, so y'all are my brothers. And if you're always my brothers, you've been my brothers for the past 45 years, and without you, I would not be here tonight, just like I'm sure that in Kappa Six and Sigma Chi, my Pi Kappa Phi brothers, I wouldn't be standing here tonight if it wasn't for this brotherhood and the guys and the girls who represent us tonight and, and Greeks in total. So I will say that and I do appreciate it. And of course my room is sitting over here. We've been together 45 years. We were on the third floor. Y'all, most of y'all saw the movie Animal House. Oh, that wasn't a movie. <laughs> no, that was a, that was a real life experience. <laughs> And you know, Alf was the uh, distinguished alumni two years ago, and who'd ever thought the third floor, 145 Taylor Street, would spit out two guys like this, and, he, and we have, and we're proud to have been a part of this. I went into education, figured out what I want to do when I grew up. I guess I'm still in the process of growing up, because this is my 43rd year, and uh, I did it because my mama was a teacher, and I saw what she did. I also saw they got out a week for Thanksgiving, two weeks for Christmas, <laughs> you know, had summer off. And, all this stuff, so I said, that's pretty good. And I've been fortunate to see a lot in education, and I want to recognize all the educators who graduated in this state, and especially those from Georgia Southwestern College, because you are tremendously important people, because, ladies and gentlemen, the world rests on your shoulders, okay? I, I must take this time to honor all of us who stand in front of the students each and every day to pass on this knowledge, because we have some of these kids at, at our school, they don't have a clue. Hell, I was one of them, okay? And I was smart. So we've got to look at them to see where you want to be in life and what success that you want to have in life. 
I appreciate those who inspire and motivate the youth of today. You know, I've got an investment in this as many of you do or shall have. They're sitting right over here. Our future rests here, ladies and gentlemen, and I want to make sure that those who educate are recognized that our life's work is to inspire and to motivate. Those who look into that little kindergartner's eye and see that twinkle that says, help me be smart. Those who look into the heart of that middle schooler and see someone who wants to know, yeah, I'm talking to you, into the, and ask that middle schooler, what can I do? Who can I be? And can look into the soul of that high school student who asks, point me to greatness in my life. How can I do that? I honor those educators who are in this room and all of you are educators. Everybody teaches. You just don't have to have a teaching certificate. Everybody teaches every day. And I want to know that I appreciate what you do to pass on that wherewithal. You're here at a university. You've done something right. You're not walking the streets. You've educated somebody, you've succeeded in life, and you have the, the wherewithal to come here. I hope you teach these kids the wherewithal and teach them the ump to be great in life. Give them that, give them that to be. I want to thank those who led and guided me through my career. Dr. Robert Clay, Bob Clay in Lee County, Andy Henderson, who uh, took me under his wing, Tex Houston, who was my first principal, Mr. Flowers, who was my principal at Westover. You know, I thought I was teaching in the classroom. It was tough sometimes. And all I saw were these principals and assistant principals walking down the hall drinking coffee, walking the hall. I said, that's what I want to do. I don't want to stand in front of these folks. I didn't understand that they were going to get some kindergartner who was going to knock them out at some point. And so I, these are the people who helped me to be what I am today. And the most important people that helped me to be here are those thousands of students whose lives have touched me. And I hope that I have touched theirs. To those children who have had success in life, I thank you for being successful. And those who may have struggled some, don't give up. And I hope that I have not failed you. I continue to work. I am closing now. I continue to work because teaching and learning never cease. I work now in the smallest and poorest system in the state, Tolliver County. They don't use all the letters in Tolliver, in case you wonder, because those children deserve the best education possible. It is my vision that those little kids that come and sit in that little school, we have all these computer technology, that when they get a job and they go to Atlanta or London or San Francisco to interview, they can look at anybody else in the eye and say, my education was just as good as yours. I'm proud of who I am and where I came from because I, too, have had great education. And as I close, I do recognize my wife, Lisa. She's been with me all these years. Thank you, Lisa. And she, too, is an educator. I thank my daughter, Camille, and my Mason and Ari, otherwise known as Buddy and Bueller. <laughs> Bueller. <laughs> Bueller. <laughs> uh, you're not paying attention, are you? And I recognize my son, Cliff. And I close to dedicate this award to my late son, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa, if you could come up, and Alf and Marianne, if you could come up. We have a surprise announcement this evening, so if you would uh, indulge us for just a moment. Our friend Space knew that he was going to receive this award this evening, but through the efforts of Alf and Mary Ann Tuggle, we do have a surprise. We are pleased tonight to announce a new endowed scholarship at Georgia Southwestern. Funding to, per to establish the permanent endowment is being given by Alf and Mary Ann Tuggle. It is the desire of the Tuggles to name the scholarship the Fort Family Scholarship in honor of Mr. and Mrs. Allen Bowles Fort for their many years of commitment to the education of Georgia's youth and in memory of their son, Thomas Taylor Fort. Mr. Tuggle and Mr. Fort, please go ahead. As he said,
said they were fraternity brothers and roommates during their years at Georgia Southwestern and have maintained their close relationship for over 45 years. With this endowment, students in perpetuity will receive scholarship funding and have their quest to become teachers supported in the Fork family name. We're honored to have the scholarship endowment at Georgia Southwestern and pleased to present you each with a copy of it. invite Dr. Sandra Daniel from the School of Nursing. Our papers are stacking up up here. <laughs> Thank you, Rita. I am honored to present to you the recipient of the School of Nursing's 20, 2017 Outstanding Alumni Award, Dr. Judy Tingley. As Vice President and Chief Executive Officer of Erlanger Health Systems Heart and Lung Institute, Dr. Tingley works collaboratively with the physician leadership of the Institute. She uses her vast administrative, strategic planning, and program development experience to develop world-class cardiothoracic care in Southern Tennessee and the surrounding region. Additionally, she is Assistant Clinical Professor of Nursing for Columbia University's School of Nursing Doctor of Nursing Practice Program. Prior to joining Erlanger Health System, Dr. Tingley was the Chief Operating Officer of Columbia Heart Source, a cardiovascular health care quality consulting group at Columbia University Medical Center. While there, she applied her experience expansive expertise in cardiology, cardiac surgery, quality improvement, and data management to support clinical education and performance improvement initiatives throughout New York. With more than 20 years experience in healthcare, her clinical experience includes cardiac surgery intensive care, transplant intensive care, and the cardiac catheterization laboratory in both community and academic hospital settings. She is a member of many nursing leadership, advisory and steering committees, and contributor or author of several articles related to heart health. She has been an invited speaker and co-chair for sessions at Transcatheter Cardiovascular Therapeutics, the leading international interventional cardiology professional educational seminar. As a strategic planning, team building, nurse leader who develops solutions to today's ever-changing healthcare challenges, Dr. Tingley's research interests include healthcare organizational readiness for change and its impact on translating evidence into practice. It is indeed our privilege to recognize Dr. Judy Tingley as an outstanding alumni award recipient. a southern accent is actually doing at this podium tonight, so I'll try and explain myself a little bit. Um, I was fortunate enough to be a military spouse stationed up the road at Warner Robins when my children were very small about 20 years ago. And, um, you know, I was at the point of my career where I was just trying to be a mom and a great wife and, and manage a household with a TDY husband who was active duty Air Force. And I met a tremendous group of women that were working in the intensive care unit, and they actually said, you know, we're working on our BSN, wouldn't you like to join us? And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if there's a program that would actually work with a working mom 
and uh, a military spouse, but I ventured over and uh, wandered into what was the nursing building, and I actually stepped in that building today, and, uh, you know, Dr. Daniel was not the dean at that time, but I did, I did work with her, and uh, she was one of my professors, and um, the early adopting program of the RN to BSN program made it feasible for me to be a student here at Georgia Southwestern State, and I can tell you that I always felt at home, and they made it possible for me to advance my career in a way that I would not have otherwise been able to do so. So the fact that they were forward-thinking and had a bridge program that would allow me to not only work but be a mom um, made it feasible for me to advance my degree. and. What that did for me now is afforded me the opportunity to continue and get my graduate degree at Columbia, get my uh, doctorate at Case Western, and uh, have professional opportunities that probably would never have happened had Georgia Southwestern State not had the foresight to be forward thinking and come up with such bridge and uh, uh, novel approaches to advancing nursing education. So I am blessed and honored to uh, be considered um, among the peer group that I've, have been honored this evening uh, of distinguished alumni. I hope that somehow, some way, my career has blessed the university and brings a positive energy not only to the students to come, but to the alumni that have gone before us. Um, I'm excited to not only be back on the campus today, but to see the progress that's been made in my absent years um, and to be reinvigorated to see maybe there's some way I can contribute yet again to the next generation. So thank you tonight for honoring me in this tremendous way. Um, I'm blessed to be back and be amongst this prestigious group of colleagues. We have a new addition to the program. We decided to combine the Athletics Hall of Fame induction into this Alumni Awards evening. So I'm pleased to have Randy Roderick, who is a GSW alumnus, former basketball letterman, also a current member of our Foundation Board of Trustees, to introduce our Athletics Hall of Fame inductee. Randy. I'm like Alan, got to put on the glasses. <laughs> J.P. Griffin began playing golf at 19 months old under the guidance and direction of his father, Warren, a PGA of America professional and a former PGA Tour player. J.P.'s passion for golf has drawn him to the game of golf his entire life. J.P. attended Pinewood Christian Academy from K-5 through the 12th grade as a classmate and dear friend of my daughter, Renna. J.P. at Pinewood made the varsity golf team as an eighth grader, never missing a single event through his senior year. Coach Mickey Garto, one of J.P.'s high school coaches and a proud GSW graduate, secured J.P. a visit with Coach Stan Sherling here at GSW resulting in an offer for a spot on the golf team. JP realizing that the amount of talent on the GSW golf team and the improvement he would need personally to play, JP did what he's always done. JP just went to work. While at Georgia Southwestern, JP was named three-time Peach Belt Golfer of the Week, two-time Peach Belt All-Conference Selection in 2012, he was on the second team, and in 2013, he was on the first team. And also in 2012, he was named to the Ping All-Region Southeast team, and also in 2012, he was named to the All-American third team. In 2012, JP tied for second in the NCAA Division uh, II Southeast Super Regional and finished ninth in the NCAA Division II National Championship. Following a very successful collegiate career, JP remained at GSW to serve as the assistant golf coach while completing his bachelor's degree in human resource management. 
JP currently resides in Sugar Hill, Georgia with his wife Leah, is a PGA professional working at the Capital City Club in Atlanta and serving as Vice President of the Georgia Assistance Division. JP continues to actively compete in golf, winning the 2015 Georgia Assistance Match Play Championship and the 2016 and 17 Georgia Assistance Championship. JP finished tied for 14th and tied for 12th respectively at the National Assistance Golf Championship. JP Griffin is a very accomplished athlete in the, in the sport of golf. However, the numerous accomplishments are overshadowed by his character and the quality of man that he is. It is my great honor and pride that I present J.P. Griffin for the Athletic Hall of Fame for Georgia Southwestern State University. Now the uh, athlete has to take the podium. Um, had the great pleasure to play with Dr. Weaver and Mr. Fort and uh, Mr. Roderick today, and no short of entertainment in that foursome. Uh, somehow they got the idea that my wife must like me because she got up at 8.30 to go walk the golf course and follow our bunch of crazy cells around the golf course. But GSW was a family. For me, no one's used that word yet, but that's the only word I can think to describe this institution. Um, as soon as I got in, every professor, every member of the athletic department, every student embraced you, wanted to know who you are, took pride in caring that you were here and caring that you wanted to be a part of this institution. Um, I can never repay the university for all that it's given me, all the places I've got to see, all the things I've gotten to do, um, and my network keeps growing through great folks that have been inducted today. Um, Coach Roderick mentioned uh, Mickey Garnto. Uh, I wouldn't be here without him. Fortunately, he's not with us, but his son Ryan, who I graduated with, could make it. Uh, Happy you're here. I know your dad's looking down on us, and I uh, hope that we can carry on the Pinewood tradition and make him proud. Thanks so much. Thank you, JP. Now we've come to the point of the program where we get to bring Ricky Arnold back up. <laughs> Somebody with five thousand dollars, or three thousand, or two thousand. But before you do that, you got I'm to do the leave. Okay. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Have a seat, Reese. It is indeed an honor, first to be able to uh, call each of uh, uh, most of you in here, fellow alumni of Georgia Southwestern. Uh, it truly is. Be quiet, both of y'all. But real quick, these guys were also cheerleaders. <laughs> uh, also, my wife was a cheerleader. Jane, stand up. Now I want y'all to watch, stand up for just a second. That's right. She's the small one. And y'all were talking about teaching and, and being able to take breaks. Yes. After Thanksgiving, they would say, Jane, you ate a little too much turkey. Because they would have to pick her up. But uh, anyway. Y'all remember that? Someday. Yeah, Chase, that's right. Uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't tell this other little story about this, this young lady that we're fixing to give the Lee Wooden Finkley Award to. Uh, she developed her management and her human resource skills by convincing four of her sorority sisters that they needed to go to Atlanta to work at Six Flags. 
that they needed to, uh, that's right, Liz, uh, <laughs> that they needed to turn around and uh, somewhere roll the skates, some would sell ice cream. But anyway, Liz, would you be working yourself forward here? Liz has been an active member of the Alumni Association Board of Directors since joining us in 2014, serving on the leadership, uh, excuse me, scholarships, awards, and nominations committee. A faithful attendee at the board and committee meetings, she views her role, not only her role, but the role of the, the college uh, as priorities to better the board and advance the goals of Georgia Southwestern Alumni Association and the university. At GSW, as a GSW Zeta, she keeps in touch with her sisters and communications, communicates uh, alumni activities to that organization. She re recently organized, after she went over to uh, the coast, uh, at St. Simon's, uh, an alumni association gathering uh, to further the cause over on the coast. Liz, Liz serves her community, home community as a court appointed special advocate for children in foster care, as a tourism volunteer, as a member of the Sharps Memorial United Methodist Church Choir. So Liz, on behalf of the GSW Alumni Association Board of Directors, it is my privilege to recognize you as the Lewin Finkley Award winner for 2017. say class of 76 is well represented here tonight. <laughs> There's a bunch of us that graduated in 76 that have been recognized. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's been fun. Giving back to your university is a privilege, an honor, and fun. So if you haven't had a chance to do it yet mm -hmm. tonight, volunteer. Give back. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. Okay. Opposite to Alan, yeah. Liz did not know that she was the recipient of the, the Lee Wynn Finkley Outstanding Alumni Award this evening. But as the Alumni Association was selecting her, she was working to create an endowment in honor of her mother, Miss Betty Pryor Harp in commemoration of Ms. Harp's 50-year graduation from the Georgia Southwestern Teacher Education Program. Ms. Harp highly valued education and her dedication as a non-traditional student to receiving her degree served as an example of the importance of education to Liz Ruff and her family. Liz, students will forever be encouraged as future educators in your mother's name. And we're honored to have this endowment at Georgia Southwestern and to present this endowment agreement to you. Thank you. I think you're up. I think I'm up. <laughs> okay, I know everybody bought a ticket, but we need to have one person who didn't buy a ticket to the raffle. Oh no, too late. No. <laughs> I'm not gonna touch I'm not gonna touch this because I'm also in there. So we need to turn around and uh, no you you did tell them a little bit about the raffle. I'm fixing I'm, I'm tr as soon as we can get them up there. Alright this uh this raffle uh, if I'm not mistaken Jimmy came up with this idea for the raffle. Uh, who's up? I'll go ahead while, while they're trying to get this up there. Uh, if you're on the, uh, the alumni board, would you please stand? Thank you. Come on up. Come on. Hurry. Hurry. Hold up there. 
there. Never mind, we'll do another joke here for just a second here while we get another hundred bucks. Excuse me. I, I know Raymond from uh, Clayton County. Before I came here, he and I served on several boards together. So, Raymond, we trust you with that credit card. We'll get it. <laughs> He's buying I know. Ten tickets. Ten tickets? Ten. We know, I know where to find him. I know where he lives. <laughs> Randy, you pulling it out, I'll split it with you. <laughs> I'm going to be like Ricky and not touch it either. I'm not touching this thing. I have a few in there. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to draw three of them. I'm fixing to whisper something in these two guys' ears, okay? So nobody will get confused. All right, if you would turn around. All right, what I want you to do is pull, pull one, pull one out. All right, I'm not going to, I'm going to put the first one right over here on the side, okay? Oh, Lord. All right. Is it mine? All right. Is it mine? Pull another one. And one more. Okay, this is the first one. The first one's drawn to one five thousand. This is the second place. This one has won three thousand. This is the final one, and it's won two thousand. Now I still haven't touched them yet. This is okay. Ready to flip them over. No, you don't have to be present, Lynn. The next one is present. Oh, Lynn Hicks. That's 3,000. Sweet. Sweet. Beth Edwards. Beth Edwards is 2,000. Oh, yeah. She'll never know. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure how we're gonna pay. Probably in pennies, but uh, we'll be in, yeah, we'll be in, we'll be in touch. The checks in the mail. Yeah. I want to thank each of you uh, for taking part in that uh, and being here tonight. Uh, it truly is uh, an honor to be the president of the alumni association. Uh, just looking around in this room, uh, I am truly humbled to just be asked to be able to, to be here. Uh, having graduated in 76, it was a great year, Liz. Uh, but uh, to be perfectly honest, it's always been here for us as people from Americas. And sometimes we take that for granted. Uh, when, you're, when you have it in your backyard, you really don't appreciate what you have sometimes. But this place has created uh, served president, first lady, Supreme Court, and each of you. Each of you is just as important. It's because of your time and the ability that you have, you're doing it to the best of your ability. Pre please remember where you got it from. Your home, your family, or your family here. We appreciate you. Uh, again, I want to thank Karen and Kim for their part. <laughs> the, uh, the Alumni Association Board, which we've recognized. Also, uh, if you're on the foundation, would you please stand? GSW Foundation. Thank each of you. And thank you again to everyone for joining us tonight. We are only able to accomplish this because of you. To accomplish these things because of, we have one of the finest foundations for a small school. It ranks up there among the major institutions. We're very blessed. But as Dr. Isaacs would have said, it still takes more. And the only reason it takes more is so we can give more. 
we give, I think it's to 800 students, something like At that. At least. At least 800 students we help out of that 3,000 that you see. So it is important that every dollar that we get, we try to give away uh, to help, to bring others here, but to create a better world, whether it be in IT, whether it be in surgery, whether it be teaching, whether it be playing golf, whether it be doing whatever it is, do it to your best of your ability and know where you got it from. Again, homecoming week is February the 16th and 17th of 2017. That can't be right. It's got to be 2018. Uh, so mark it on your calendars. I didn't say, I don't remember that part of it. Uh, and you will not want to uh, miss this. Again, thank you to each of the award recipients. Thank you for what you did, what you accomplished. It's a small part that we recognize it. But it's without, without you, there'd be no need for any of us to be here except to do better and to accomplish better to help others. Thank you. Good night.